Welcome back. More questions today on the Ask Lee segment. Well, let's just get straight into it. Um, if you do have any questions, you can leave them in the comments below to one of the Ask Lee videos, and I will add it to the queue. Welcome to my channel. You are entering the world of magic and mysticism with your host, Lee W. Johnson. Keep the lights on and help improve the channel by becoming a supporter for just $2.99 per month. Hit the join button. All right. Ooh, my exposure's gone crazy. It'll come down just now, I'm sure. Uh, okay, so I'm looking all bright and sparkly, that's why. Okay, so let's see. This one is from uh, Julie Marie. Um, I have seen some people mention that if you've seen a demon sigil in a vision, that it is unlikely to be an imposter spirit. Do you have any insight on this? Have you ever been in a situation with an astral parasite or incubus succubus that has shown you a sigil to deceive you? Um, that is kind of the general understanding that, uh, you know, if a, if you are interacting with a spirit at, oh, my exposure's gone again. Um, if you're interacting with a spirit, then usually if they show you a sigil and it's their sigil, then, um, you know, it is the spirit you are wanting to talk to. Um... I guess there would be various differing, differing, differing opinions here. Uh, one being that the sigils that are available to us that are shared in books and on websites are sigils which have been given to people by those spirits. And we could um, make the argument that in some cases those sigils that were given to them were given by an astral parasite um, that was posing as the demon um, or the spirit. Um, so I think in the case of this, even if you are given uh, or shown the sigil by the spirit, you still need to test it and you still need to question it. Um, it's absolutely necessary. Um, you know, in most cases, you probably are dealing with the actual spirit itself and not an imposter spirit. Um, but still, there's the chance that you are. So it doesn't really matter what a spirit shows you, you still go put it through the test. And I did do a, a video not too long back um, about testing the spirits, and it was a step-by-step -step guide on how to test them. Um, but one of the things that is probably the, the the biggest test is to um, draw a banishing pentagram and push it at the spirit and let that banishing pentagram go through them. Now, in that case, what you might find is that the spirit disappears visually, um, but is still there talking to you. And this was explained to me recently that it's because the physical form that we visualize is not really a physical form. Um, these spirits are energy. Um, they only take a particular form, um, an anthropomorphic form, for our benefit. And it's usually something that we actually give them. Um, so, you know, even if you do push the, the energy through the spirit and the spirit visi visibly disappears but it's still talking to you um you are, you can be sure that it is the spirit if you push the energy through and it completely utterly goes away there's no nothing there it's gone it disappeared there's nothing talking to you there's nothing you can't see anything then it was probably an astral parasite but if you're given the sigil or not um then we're definitely still tested if you are given the sigil and dream or something like that it's probably the demon reaching out to you and wanting to talk to you uh, in which case do your research um, and then go and talk to the spirit and then test the spirit 
um, always test the spirit. Make sure that it is the spirit you you are in, you need want to interact with. Once you've done that, once you've tested it, once you know that it is the spirit you want to work with, you will. Um, there's a, a feeling you get. It's it's a you know I can't really say a visceral, visceral or a tangible feeling, um, and that feeling is going to be different for you and for me. Um, but there's a feeling you get. So if an astral parasite or, or um, uh, imposter spirit comes along and tries to tell you that it is that spirit, you've already spoken to that spirit, you've already interacted it, interacted with it, you know who it is, and you're not going to get the same feeling, and you're going to know immediately it's not the spirit. It's very similar to um, you know somebody knocking on your door, looks like a friend of yours, but you know it's not your friend. Um, there's just something about them that's not right. Uh, it's this really the same thing. So you know, once you've got into that stage, you don't always need you don't need to test the spirit every single time you talk to them. You know it's them, or you know it's not them because you've already had an interaction. You've built a relationship with them. Um, they are close to you, and you're close to them. So you just kind of know. Um, but yeah, definitely. Even if you do do get um, you know, a spirit comes to you with confirmation saying that, you know, this is my sigil and therefore I am the real spirit. Test them anyway. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Okay, going on to the next question from uh, Sarah V. Um, Heidi, can you tell us on how to utilize dark moon energy? Can dark moon energy be used for hexing? Can you use dark moon energy to charge items like how you would with full moon energy? Thank you so much for your time and your videos. Okay. Um, dark moon energy. Oh, God, this exposure is gone absolutely, utterly crazy. There we go. Hopefully that's better. Let me actually put it down here. Okay. All right. Okay. Back with you. Okay, dark moon energy. Yes, you can. A lot of people do use it for hexing um, because it's a it's kind of like a void. Um, it's a dark phase. It's there's nothing there. Um, there is no light. Okay. Um, however, and yes, you can charge things with that particular energy. Um, you can charge things with with any phase of the moon because each phase of the moon gives you a particular energy and if you want to use that in that particular energy in your magic you can charge something with it you can charge things with the sun um, and as the sun goes through different um, stages of the year it, it brings different energy so you can charge items or water with all different energies from the sun from the moon um, you can also take water from a river as opposed to your tap, um, or you can take rainwater as opposed to river water, sea water, etc., etc., etc. So, and those will all give you different energies, different uh, things you can do um, in your particular workings. So it depends what you want to accomplish, and then go after the particular energy that you, that will help you accomplish that. Um, what I find with dark moon magic is a, a creative force, uh, a creative aspect. It's kind of like throwing yourself into the um, abyss of all possibilities. Um, it's that darkness where you can discover everything and anything. Um, it's the the all and the nothing it's the spaces between the all and the nothing um, it's it's just that space where you can start to pull out creativity and those dark dark moon phases don't last very long um, sometimes it's, an, it's a couple of hours I think and sometimes it can be up to three days um, but during that time what you can do is look into it in order to find inspiration which then during the, uh, when the new moon phase comes along, you can then start putting creativity into action. So it's kind of like pulling out the possibilities that you can uh, get from it. 
and then taking it into the new moon phase and putting it into action, taking it right through all the phases and all through the development of the actual work itself. Um, so that's what I would use utilize that for. Uh, next question. Let me just see. There we go. Uh, oh, Twilight Wanderer. Have you worked with dragons? I actually did one two weeks ago. I meant to put this question in there as well uh, because it was relating to the whole dragon magic thing. Um, just to recap, um, I don't work with a draconic energy or a draconic force or a draconic order. Um, I have worked with and still work with, always been around, always will be around a guardian dragon who really is a, a spirit animal in a sense. Um, you know, spirit animals can be mythological beings, myth myth mythological entities. So, you know, um, but that particular spirit animal, that, that guardian spirit um, is always there. And I do consider the draconic energies to be the forces that move around, around us, within us, um, flowing through all things um, and flowing through the land, they're, they're particular forces. And we call those these forces by many different names, dragon energy is just one of them. And not referring to ley lines, um, that I, I think is a very different thing to the, the dragon energy or the dragon breath that people relate to it. Um, the, the dragon breath relating to the ley lines, um, I think came very much from Chinese feng shui, um, where the feng shui practitioner will um, go and, and look for the energy, how the energy is flowing through the land. Um, certain uh, uh, elements which which are raised on off off the ground like trees rocks mountains etc the energy will then flow in a different way and then going through a house through a building um, depending on depending on corners and things like that the energy will flow um, in a particular manner and that flow can be altered and it's often referred that flow in feng shui is often referred to dragon energy or dragon breath um, and I think that got related to ley lines, but I think that's very, very two different, two very different, ugh, very different things. Um, so just to add to the one I did a couple of weeks ago. Um, all right, the next question. Oops, right, I'm skipping ahead. There we go. Uh, from Twilight Wanderer, um, what are your thoughts regarding the concept of God spouses? Do you find it offensive like many pagans? Let me hear your thoughts. I don't find it offensive. Um, I do think that it is very relevant in a lot of cultures. Uh, you find this a lot in voodoo, but in, you know, in voodoo practice, again, a lot of um, people within that culture will say that it, it's not a real thing, whereas others will. Um, we find it throughout, we find it in paganism, um, what I do think the the difficulty and the problem is is that we we build relationships with gods and goddesses. We build these particular relations relationships with them, and a lot of the time that could feel like love, um, but. I think it gets misinterpreted as this spirit coming through and wanting to be married to the person. Um, we also find um, that we term things when it comes to things like the fetch mate, um, and we can bring, we can relate this to the holy guardian angel um, and all such entities which would represent a higher self, if we can put it that way. Um, there's often talk of or we refer to or we say it in a manner where we we speak of a marriage and it is a marriage because it's it's bringing two things together in union and that bring bringing two things together in union is a marriage um but i think that gets misinterpreted in the way of you know that we we interpret uh, human marriage 
um, where you are going to get married to a person, you're going to spend the rest of your life with them, you are going to have sex with them, you are going to be in this relationship which is spousal. And in some cases, I think this happens um, between gods and goddesses and humans. Um, in some cases, I think it's just a misinterpretation. It really is just building that relationship that we all build with spirits. Um, or not all, but those who actually do work with the spirits of the gods and the goddesses. Um, we build those relationships, and those relationships are very much, well, very similar to what you would find in a human marriage. Um, in some cases, people will talk about having sex with the spirits. Um, does that happen? I, I don't uh, disregard it. Um, but again, I think in a lot of cases, it's it could be pure delusion. Um, we also have older myths and stories. Uh, we can simply go and look at the Gregorio, the Watchers, who were a, a band of angels that came down to earth and were instructed to watch over humans. And um, Shemyaza or Azazel um, decided to form a rebellion because they kind of thought the the human women were kind of sexy and hot and they wanted to have a good time with them so they had sex with with uh, the human women um, created a whole new race called Nephilim etc 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 but we have these sexual relationships between spirits and humans um, through mythology and you know it's it's always been there and I think it's always going to be there I think what needs to be questioned is whether the person is actually just building a normal relationship like the rest of us do, or if it is actually a, a, a spirit marriage. Um, you know, a lot, of, a lot of reports that people give, the god or the goddess came to them and said, I want to be married to you. Um, and that's very specific, and that happens a lot in a lot of different cultures. Um, but at the same time, then you have people who are married to 10, 11, 12 different gods and goddesses. That gets a bit overboard. Um, are they really having a spirit or god or goddess come to them and say, I want to marry you? Or is it just misinterpretation? Um, were they given a message and they, they didn't interpret the message properly and they thought it was this? Are they just delusional? Um, there's a lot of possibilities, and but I, I don't discount it. I don't think that every single case is delusional. Um, I think it, it definitely happens. I think it is something that a lot of people can benefit from. Um, but it just doesn't fall into other people's ideas of what is done, should be done within their own practice. So they're not going to not going to pursue it. Um, at the same time, somebody who doesn't actually follow that ideology could find a spirit come to them and say, I'm, I want to be married to you now. Um, you know, it happens in life with uh, human relationships as well. <laughs> you, you swear off marriage, you're never going to get married again, and all of a sudden, next month, you're married. Um, so, you know, anything's possible, really. But, yeah. So, anyway. That's it for yeah. That's it for this week. Actually, I think we will do some more questions next week. All right. So have a good one, and I'll see you then. Cheers for now. Bye bye.